Hope you're doing great. Kobe Shots here, and I want to take you through how I color grade my images using color balance in Photoshop. It is the most basic way that I've found for beginner photographers and retouchers alike. So if you want to see how I achieve my images on my page on Instagram using color balance in Photoshop, come along. Welcome to my image that I'm editing. I just finished retouching this. As you see, I've done a couple of frequency separation and dodge and bend to the image. Once I'm through with that, let's move on to the purpose of the tutorial. All right, so I color grade basically with color balance, which can be found down here, all right? And what I normally do is I make sure that the colors in there are influencing the way I color grade. But if I need to change a tone, I can just, you know, create a layer and, you know, quickly move into camera raw filter to push a few colors and change the tones. But basically, I color grade the entire workflow is color graded with color balance. All right. So once you open up color balance, this is what you get. You have cyan, magenta, you have yellow. And on the other side, you have some contrasting colors like the red against the blue, the green against the magenta, and the blue against the yellow. All right, so I always start with the shadows and I push in a little bit of the reds, depending on the colors, just as I said before, the colors in the image, especially the background and what the costume is made up of. So you see a lot of warm tones in the skin, you see a lot of warm tones in what she's wearing as well as the background. So what I normally do with a picture of this nature is that I push in a little bit of the reds, all right? But you make sure you don't do it too much, otherwise, you change your images from being real to surreal. Okay, so um, I'll push in a little bit of the blues to accentuate the shadows. All right, then I'll move straight ahead to highlights. All right, so what a highlight is gonna do is to target all the bright areas of the image. Normally, I love to push in some cyans into the highlights so that it will calm down a little bit of the warm tones into the cool side, all right? So what you're gonna notice is you see that there are some blues being pushed into uh, the down areas over here. You're gonna see that all the highlights are picking up the blues. It is looking quite good. I equally push in a little bit of blue itself into it, but make sure that I don't do it too much. Okay. So let's do a little bit before and after so that we see how far we've come with the image. Okay, so far I'm liking what I'm seeing. Okay. All right, and to further, I mean, change the tone of the skin, what I'm gonna do is to create another layer. I'm gonna create another layer. This time I'm gonna select hue and saturation and um, I always go into colors that are present in the skin. So if you look at the makeup of a skin, the makeup of skin is red, yellows, and oranges, all right? So basically, I'm gonna select the reds, and what I do over here is to move the slide of the, ha of the lightness to the left, and this crashes down all reds that you see in the image. But not to worry, we are going to you know, mask out where we want the red, you know, crashed down to affect. So some particular areas are going to be affected and others are going to be left out. So once that is done, I'm going to make sure that the hue and saturation layer is still active. Then I'll hit Control and I to revert the image back to how it was. And what you see over here is that the max um, indicator is looking black, which shows that we have hidden the effects that we created. So we we'll go straight to using brush tool and ensure that the color that we pick over here in the color picker is white. So white will reveal what's hidden over here in the black indicator. So let's quickly um, bring out the effect that we created in the here saturation line. Slider. So we're going to make sure that our flow and our opacity is set to 100% on both sliders. 
I'm gonna paint through but make sure that your brush is set to 0% of hardness to make it as soft as you can then we'll brush through the areas that we don't want to vibrant okay so the skin particularly all right you can always revert the effect if you brush through somewhere that you wish not to like if i should brush through here i can easily undo or i can switch the color picker to the black which is easily done by the first method is you can easily go down here or you can hit shift and x to switch the color picker all right so i'll hit shift and x to set it back to the black and black is going to hide back what we did so as you see the tones are coming back from what we did since we don't want that i'm going to undo all right switch back to the white to continue to bring out the tone that we want for the skin all right okay so one thing i've also noticed is that what we are doing is also affecting the lips all right so i'm going to revert black to a black color picker and paint back on the lips to reveal it back to how it's supposed to be and most of the time it crashes down the eyeshadow which is supposed to also stand out so we are gonna equally bring that back okay just like so all right okay one thing that you notice clearly is that it has been i mean overdone so not to worry we can easily reduce the opacity to somewhere that we deem fit to ensure that the image looks as real as possible okay all right okay so it looks okay and we can create one more color balance you know don't be scared to create as many layers as you want all right if one layer didn't help you achieve what you wanted to achieve you can always go back to it and you know push back those colors into it until you get what you really want doesn't work move a little bit to the greens like so yeah I think I'm I like what I'm seeing right now okay one other thing that I can do is that I can merge all the layers into one layer I can merge all the layers into one layer like this and hit Control shift a to bring back the camera raw filter tab I can continue to change the tones as much as I want But mind you the frequency separation should be done before all these You know Can be done Otherwise, you cannot go back after creating or merging all the layers together. You cannot go back to your know, frequency separation if it's something is wrong with some places or some areas in your image. Okay. All right. Okay. Pushing some down tones into the temperature. Let's set it to one. Do we have some orange tones in the skin? which looks kind of pleasant okay so we're looking at a golden skin tone let's increase the luminance of the reds which you remember can be found in the skin all right okay so let's change the hue of the blue back there the pillar back there it's a little bit of teal 
which also affects the blues that are present in the white um, outfits that the model is wearing which also looks quite good okay and let's accentuate the brightness of the grass down there by increasing the greens and pushing the yellows also forward in the highlights okay but make sure don't overdo it otherwise it messes up the image entirely all right so we are having such a wonderful skin tone and equally the overall skin tone that we see in the image looks good we're gonna hit ok and our layer has given us what we created in the camera raw filter all right so what we can do is that if the skin tone looks too warm we can duplicate the hue and saturation layer move it up to the top of this layer to review the effect that we created before and if it's not enough remember that we sent the opacity to a reduced effect so we can bring it back to 100% or somewhere that looks quite good all right Okay, so you can further create another color balance layer and push your colors as much as you want. Okay. Like that. Just like so. Okay, so yeah. We've been able to achieve what we set off to do. All right, one thing that I always do to my images is that I create this white flare that looks like light flares peeking into the image or affecting the lens to create this wonderful foggy look to the image. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. This helps beautify the image further or it helps you to you know set your viewers to look at exactly what you want them to look at so it reduces a bit of distractions in the image so for instance i have someone seated in a chair over here even though it's blurred out if i want to further reduce the distraction it's causing in the image i can easily create that foggy look so what i do is i create an empty layer I hit the brush tool, make sure that the color picker is all the way up to the whites, pure white actually. I open up the brush size, make sure that my opacity is set to 100, so is my flow. And uh, the brush hardness is set to zero as well. With the empty layer selected, I can hit anywhere, but make sure you hit in the center somewhere so that the gradient is kept within the image because if you should hit it all the way to the left hand side what you realize is that when you move it away there's a clear cut that doesn't really look good or that wouldn't serve the purpose for which we are creating this for so you make sure that you always hit it in the center just like this all right so once that is done you're going to open up the brush that we've created the fog look you can push it on the way to the corner or to the edge and open it up even further and then cover up the distraction with it all right so just like so let's push a little bit away okay we apply so let's zoom out and see all right it looks quite good but if it's overdone you can push it away out of the frame and what i can also do is i can create multiple flares like that but always make sure that you position it in some areas of the image that wouldn't look weird all right so like this maybe a little bit below to the feet like that let's zoom out and see it looks too obvious maybe open up a little bit too 
soften the gradient even more. All right, like this. Cool. Then you apply. And I think our image looks good so far. Or maybe we could duplicate and then send it a little bit up above. One more up above like this. Emulating the position of the light and how it's affecting our image, giving us this backlit effect. All right. So, so far I like how our image is looking after all the hard work that we've put in. So there you have it. That's how I achieve the look on my images using color balance to color grade in Photoshop. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and turn on the post notification button if you want to be the first to always be notified anytime I upload a video on my YouTube channel. Until the next video, see ya.